<clears throat> shalom, shalom. I am here to do my due diligence. <clears throat> it doesn't matter what all I'm going through and all of that. There's no excuse to not get on here and do my duty. Now, this next message, you can see the title of it. I am very well aware. Most people will avoid this message like the plague. They don't want to know, all right? Uh, they don't want to know how many people have been deceived by the false god of money. Oh, no, <laughs> this is not a popular message, all right? Uh, people have been uh, complacent with the false god of money, all right? Um, they've been lullabied to sleep, all right? Your pulpit pimping pastors been utilized to keep you comatose in serving the false god of money, worshiping the false god of money. But the Most High rose up his people, his portion, in this time, because we're at the end. And the reason that we're instructed to make it very crystal clear. See, we're no longer speaking in parables because we're at the end of this satanic illusion. And as I stated, even though I am very well aware that most people won't even click on this video, they'll avoid this video like the plague. Yes, they will because they are comfortable and complacent with their God which is money, materialism. They see nothing wrong with capitalism, nothing whatsoever. Never mind how it's completely contrary to the eternal living power of love, life, and all things good. Yeah, it's contrary to the creator of the earth, the heavens and the earth, the giver of the breath of life, capitalism is the direct opposite of that eternal power. Okay? So, because of that, we have been living in an illusion of Satan. Okay? And the hearts of many people have become hardened. I'm here to make you aware of this so that you have a genuine opportunity to humble yourself like a child because it cannot be forced. You have to subdue your own ego. All right? I can't subdue your ego for you. I subdued my own ego. See, that's what has to happen, people. Those of us who the Most High can utilize, we have to go within ourselves and fix that which is within us first. Being obedient. Subduing our ego. Humbling ourselves to the spirit of truth. When the spirit of truth comes, it comes to reprove. Reproof is not fun, okay? Reproof hurts. The truth hurts. It wounds. That sword of the spirit is sharper than any two-edged sword. It discerns the heart and the intent. Yes, it pierces to the depths of your soul. Okay? So it will make you aware of your transgression. And it's an uneasy feeling. Especially when you're holding on to core belief systems. All right? So you have to subdue your ego. All right? I'm not here to subdue your ego. 
All right, but I am here to speak this living word by the way of the spirit. And only the people that are able to subdue their ego will be re- will be able to receive it. Okay? You'll be able to receive this living word by the way of the spirit. The rest of you are going to be puffed up in your pride and your arrogance. And you know what happens to those who are arrogant, puffed up in their pride. Pride comes before great destruction, okay? So, um, let's go ahead and get this started. Again, the name of this audio is Many Have Been Deceived. By the false god of money. <clears throat> it was recorded on 529-24. Okay? 529-24. Um, at this time, let me look at the calendar right quick. <clears throat> Give me just a second. Because, yeah, at this time, I was going through a lot. All right? I was facing a lot of huge-ass financial mountains. Um, that clearly I could not move in my own power. All right, 529. Let's see here. So that was eight days away from the 6th of June. Okay, and so on uh, May 6th, I had a, a notice to vacate. All right. On May 6th, I had a notice to vacate um, on my door, all right, for non-rent payment. Um, I did not have $25 to pay the rent uh, for May. So on May 6th, it became $29. They tacked on $4 uh, for a late fee. And then it, it was a dollar per day. And like I said, um, this was recorded on the 29th. So it had accumulated uh, quite a substantial amount, okay? And and seeing as how I don't have any income, I'm not working for money, all right? I'm doing the spiritual work that I've been given and instructed to give, okay? So um, I had no might in my hands to pay the rent, all right? So I just had to wake up each day, um, not knowing, you know, how I was going to get the rent paid, you know, just trusting that the most high got me, but I'm not sure how far it has to go. You know, of course, you know, it, it doesn't seem like he would allow me to be homeless and because then I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. Okay. However, I lost the internet several times, you know, at least three times I've lost the internet, you know, for a period of time, and then he'll raise me back up, you know, but not knowing exactly how far the Most High is going to let, you know, the trials and tribulations go on before, you know, lifting me up, okay, um, not knowing that, you know, it does cause a little bit of anxiety, okay? <laughs> so, but each day, you know, um, I woke up still yet praising the Most High. Still woke up each day doing um, what was upon my spirit to do. During this time, I was making a lot of posts on Facebook. As a matter of fact, let's go take a trip right quick. You know what? I don't think... Oh, hold on a second, people. <clears throat> Cause I forgot to bring up my dang Chrome. Yeah. Bring up my OBS, but I forgot to bring up the Chrome. So give me just a second. Mm. You know, I was making a lot of posts on Facebook on my phone. Okay, I had data, but I didn't have um, internet. <clears throat> you know, data gives you a little bit of internet. You know, I had four point four point two something gigabytes. Per month, it's really four gigabytes, but they'll let it go over a little bit over four gigabytes. But really, it's four gigabytes <clears throat> that they allot you per month um, with my phone company. Okay, so let me go here. Mm. 
Bruh, this is so slow. My computer wants to do updates, but I really don't want to let it do updates. Because, um... Uh, let me see. Give me just a second. Just, I'm not trying to have it, um... Lock me out <clears throat> of my windows. Man, come on. Please stop lagging. You see what I have to deal with, people. You see what I have to deal with? I have to put up with this laggy, slow-ass PC, and it's hella annoying. I'm trying to do my due diligence, you know, trying to flow by way of the spirit, and I gotta put up with this, you know. This is a very old PC. <clears throat> I bought it back in 2016. Um. Give me just a second, people. I'm trying to close out a background crap in the task manager. All right, all right, man. It's still lagging, bro. I'm sorry, people. Just please bear with me. Because I'm having to put up with this stupid stuff. Like, this is ridiculous. I do not understand why it has to do this. My memory is 96%. Disk is 50. CPU is going up. I'm like, this is absolutely crazy, bro. Oh, my gosh, man. CPU is all to 90-something percent. Finally, it's not screaming in the red zone. Okay, so let's just go to... I think because, yeah, I didn't have any... Uh... Oh, yeah, I, I, my internet was uh, cut, I think, sometime in April. <clears throat> so, yeah, my, my internet was cut in April. So, let's just start at May 1st. Oh, goodness sakes, bro. <laughs> I'm trying to look at some of the stuff that I was posting. You know, see, I posted all of this, but I'm going to go to some of my stuff here. This was May 10th. Or no, that's May 1st. Oh, I should show a thumbnail or something. Okay, that's one, I think. Let's see what the heck this is, bro. <clears throat> what are these problems? Mm. Alright, that was someone else's post. I just shared it. Um, but I'm not even trying to get on that. But yeah, this is a whole lie, bro. They taught us this. Okay? But this is a whole lie. Okay? Um, I got other videos going into detail on how that is a lie. But let's see. This is one. Let me see how Facebook removes my posts a lot. Oh, this lag is annoying, bro. It's so annoying. <clears throat> All right. So, you see, I posted this on May 1st. All right. No servant can serve two masters. Okay. You see how no one liked it? Okay. Of course, I well, I didn't tag nobody in this. So, Facebook most likely just hit it. Okay. <clears throat> you know, I, I really don't like you know, having to tag people because, you know, a lot of people don't like being tagged, okay, and I understand, you know, but if I don't tag, then Facebook just hides my post, um, but so I posted this, see, the problem most people have with me is the fact that I don't value money, it makes them salty, because they feel like the value of money is what sustains life. They are deeply deceived. It's not the value of money that sustains life. The value of money is what's destroying life and oppressing all humanity and all creation. The only reason people are living this way 
is because it was forced upon us by extremely wicked people who want selfish gain for themselves. Most people rather be complacent with that and demonize the few of us who rebel against such wickedness. I get why people do what they do to sustain their life. And that's their choice. We all have free agency. People are free to do what has been established within this system. I will respond to that later. That in and of itself is not evil. Okay? Let me read this again. <clears throat> People are free to do what has been established within this system. Okay? All right? We Just because this was forced on us don't mean we have to do it. If we choose to submit our, ourselves to the great spirit, okay? This is what people need to understand, all right? People need to understand, hey, if you choose with your free agency to put all your trust and faith in the great spirit and you're obedient because obedience is necessary, that's required, okay? Because you can say all damn day that you, you trust the great spirit and, and you can. However, the great spirit ain't going to have your back when you are disobedient. Okay? The only way that you can really put your trust and faith in the great spirit and be able to stand firm on it is if you are obedient to what the great spirit instructed of you. Okay? This is what it is, people. I ain't lying to you. Okay? So, if, you, if you're not being obedient... To the great spirit, then of course you will have to do what the system has established in order for you to sustain your life. All right? Therefore, you do what you have to do. You get your jobs and you earn your money so that you can sustain your life and the life of your family. Okay? And it's understandable. The great spirit is all compassionate, all merciful, understands that this was forced on us, okay? But it's still about your mindset. It's still about your heart condition, all right? So even even though you are not in 100% obedience to the great spirit, you know, to, you know, go, go within yourself, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and then allow the great spirit to sustain your life, you're not strong enough to do that in the spirit. All right? And that's okay. That's understandable. All right? There's only a selected handful of people that will be able to do what I'm doing. Okay? Um, But it doesn't throw out the window how you were instructed to walk in love towards your neighbor as you do yourself. It doesn't throw out the window how you were instructed to be compassionate, to be merciful, to be empathetic, all right? To be kind, all right? Treat your neighbor the way you want to be treated. All of that does not go out the window just because you choose to do what you have, what the system has, ex has established for you to do. So therefore, you think that this is what you have to do. Okay, it, uh, that it, the eternal law don't go out the window, people, all right? It does not go out the window. It's still there, okay? And you are still going to be judged based on how you treated people, how you treated all humanity and all creation. We're all going to be judged for our actions during our mortality, okay? Now, that in and of itself, okay, 
you you doing what the system has established in and of itself is not evil all right but it does however become evil when you begin to harden your heart against others who don't do as you do for when you do that you're attempting to strong arm slash take away others rights another person's free agency like you want to take away my free agency to put my trust and faith in the great spirit not in the freaking god of money that was established by the wicked okay so when you set yourself against what the father instructed for me to do and you harden your heart against me because i'm not doing what you're doing when you do that you are attempting to strong arm that means you're trying to take away my free agency and that my people is evil it's way deeper than you realize hold on you guys can't see sorry but sorry 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 okay <laughs> oh my god people sorry about that you can't see i'm trying to freaking pull it up but it's lagging on me <laughs> oh my god uh, come on now. Oh, I know how to pull it up. Give me a second. I keep forgetting that it has to be on a certain freaking page for it to freaking register. Come on. Because I'm not trying to add this again. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Now, sorry that you people could not see. All right. Now you can see. All right. Now, I was, I've been reading this post here. You see, it was posted on May 1st, okay? Now, it's way deeper than you realize, all right? Um, when you do that, my people, you are attaching yourself to the same wicked-ass people who forcefully established this system with much bloodshed and outright robbery. Okay, please understand what I'm saying. The system itself did not come from the great spirit. The monetary system that we were all born into, that did not come from the great spirit. Okay, let me show you. Let me, sh bro, I, I can't work this way. Hold on a second, because, you know, when I try to move my mouse, it's just getting stuck. I'm tired, bro. Damn. Like, come on. Why is Microsoft content trying to load right now? This is freaking crazy, bro. I'd be so tired. I'd be so tired. I'd be so tired, bro. I can't help it, people. Because I'm working on a dinosaur PC. I ain't had no love shown to me, you know? So I have to utilize what I have in order to do what I have been given to do. Okay? Regardless of all my issues. So just please bear with me. I'm trying to get it to load, people. What the hell? Where's my phone at? Somebody's blowing up my phone and I can't find the phone. Might be something important. Give me a second, people. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna have to respond to this in a little bit. All right. Because I'm on one track. I gotta show you people where the economic system came from. All right, proving to you that it, it did not come from the great spirit, okay? But the great spirit is compassionate and merciful, all right? Understands, you know, that, you know, this was forced upon us, 
okay? But you should not cast off um, those of us who the Great Spirit awakened and put his spirit in, okay? You should not detest me, all right? Because I'm here to help you. people I don't know it's this computer with freaking work bro it's so annoying come on god bro I know I need to restart it but bro I'm not trying to have that thing not bring up my Windows. It's been two days that it's been trying to restart. <clears throat> All right. So you see this? The Federal Reserve Bank, okay? That's who established this, all right? Let me show you a picture. All right. These are the people, all right, from... 1970 to 2020, all right, they are the ones over the Federal Reserve, okay? You know, they could have abolished this, all right? But every last one of these people are billionaires, okay? And they want selfish gain, okay? And they're descendants, okay? Yes, they want selfish gain for themselves, so, therefore, they're not going to abolish what their forefathers established, economic slavery, okay? So, they established economic slavery, requiring the people to feed and house themselves. Yeah, it's one of the most ingenious scams for social manipulation ever created, and at its core, it is an invisible war against a population. Okay? So this did not come from the great spirit, people. This came from the wicked. All right? And the great spirit knows it. All right? Understands. Understands that we were forced into that. All right? So understand is way deeper than you realize. Okay? When you try to strong arm me into doing with you what you do, you know, because you withhold of your abundance, all right? You don't want to, you know, give me sustenance, you know? Like, you literally harden your heart, or right? You know damn well I'm human, okay? You know damn well that, yes, these wicked people you know, established money, you know, for us to utilize to sustain our damn life. But as you could just see, it wasn't established by the great spirit. So those of you who have abundance, when you shut up your heart of compassion and you refuse to assist me where I'm lacking, Understand you are setting yourself as an adversary to the great spirit, okay? Yes, it's deeper than you realize because when you set yourself as an adversary, when you shut up your heart of compassion, you are attaching yourself to the same wicked-ass people. How are you doing that? Because you got the same mentality, okay? Root hog or die poor, all right? That's, that's how they think. Okay, that's the mindset of the wicked. The great spirit instructed for us to be compassionate, merciful, kind, generous, okay, loving, all right? But you're choosing to be the opposite. Therefore, you are attaching yourself to the wicked, okay? You're attaching yourself to the same people who forcefully established this system. When you try to force me to do what you do, how do you try to force me to do what you do? You shut up your bowels of compassion. You refuse to give me substance 
out of your abundance. You have abundance of the resource that was created by mortal men. Okay? Because it's not a natural resource. Money ain't no damn natural resource. Okay? No, the wicked stole the resources from the indigenous people and then they have created it into a commodity and they created money okay and they put a value system upon money all right that's what happened and so when you attach yourself to these wicked ass people who forcefully established this system with much bloodshed and outright robbery you are making yourself an adversary to the great spirit. How come you ain't got none of the fruits of the spirit in your heart? How come all the spirits up in your heart is evil? Greed, selfishness, envy, jealousy, hatred, bitterness. All of these things don't come from the great spirit. That comes from the adversary. You especially make yourself an enemy to the one many of you are professing you serve. When you do this to those of us led of the Holy Spirit. When you do this to those of us on our spiritual mission, that's extremely dangerous. I'm instructed to give you these messages, these warnings. Woe to you people who love, cherish, and value money, but quick to shut up your bowels of compassion, love, mercy, and empathy towards your neighbor who don't have our hearts set upon money. See, I value and cherish the oracles of the great spirit. The fact that you people hate me for it, that speaks volumes. Not only to me, but to the one you are professing. It don't matter what you're, what you're professing out your mouth. When your heart is directly contrary, it don't matter what you psych yourself out to believe. When your actions are contrary. See, I value and cherish the oracles of the great spirit. That's what I live for. That's what I adore. I don't adore materialistic things and honors of men and clout and status and all that trivial shit of this world. So when you try to force me to be like you who love this world, please understand what you are doing. Okay? No servant can serve two masters. Luke 16, 13. All right? That's one of the posts that I did. Okay? One second. Hopefully this did not take that away, bro. Please. Come on now. Why would you take it away? Why? Like, bro, come on. Made me have to go through all of this all over again, bro. This is insane. I am trying my best, bro. I'm trying my best. But this shit is being stupid. It's being hella stupid, bro. Like, oh my god. They are making it very difficult for me. Okay? Like, bruh. I got to pull up these posts. I'm, I'm instructed to do this. And I'm not trying to take forever on this, though.
just so annoying, people. You have no idea. You have no idea how annoying this is. Slow ass PC, bro. I'm so tired. I'm tired, man. All I want to do is be obedient to my spiritual mission. Like, I really wish people would start being obedient to take their place as the righteous ams so that, you know, I don't have to go through all this and I can more so easily get this workout without having to fight my slow-ass PC. Bro, this is insane. Well, you can clearly see what I'm dealing with, people. It ain't even loading. I need to get another post. Like, it's, it's really annoying me, bro. Like, for real, oh my God. It's, I swear to God, it's like they put lag monsters on this. Trying to prevent me from going in my history. What I posted. You know what I'm saying? I think they do this shit on purpose, bro. I think they do this on purpose so that I cannot pull up my old post. I swear, I think they're doing this on purpose because this is insane. Let me see if I can... And you know what's crazy is that I can more so easily do this on my phone than on my PC. So I may just have to repost every damn thing. Instead of trying to go back in my history on my PC because it's not letting me. It's being stupid as hell. So I'm going to have to close it out. Give me just a second. I'm going to have to do this another way. I'm going to have to do it another way. Because it's, it's, not, it's not working. I need to I need to uh, show you guys some of these posts, okay? So give me just a moment. Let me do this a different way. These these devils want to play with me, bro, and I'm tired. I'm tired of them. We we gonna we gonna uh, get around it though. We gonna get around it. You see what I'm having to deal with, people. I I bet you it might have uh, cut me off. Did it stop my damn stream? It did. Uh, no, okay, I, I see the time still going. <laughs> Bruh, I'll be so tired. This is insane. I cannot believe this, bro. This is so crazy. Give me a second. Trying my best, people. I'm trying my best, but I'm having to deal with stupidness. Now, clean my PC. I ran crap cleaner and all of that before I even got on here. But it, it's being stupid, man. My memory is at 98%. Okay. Oh, what in the hell is you doing? What the hell? Can I not share it? I don't want to delete it. I want to share it. What in the hell? Bro, this is pissing me off. Like, oh my God. It's like not not even letting me share it on my phone. All it's doing is, is, is giving me the option to delete. This is crazy, bro. The... These devils be doing the most. They do the most, bro. Oh, my God. They are doing the most. They're doing the most to try to hide this truth. Like, oh, my God, bro. This is crazy. What in the hell? I don't don't understand. How am I supposed to show these people? How am I supposed to show these people these posts? When they're they're doing the most to hide it. I'm trying to share. I want to share it. Bro, I I can't stand this. I can't stand it. I cannot stand it.
is only giving me the option to freaking delete. I cannot believe this, bro. This is crazy. Oh my god! Why? Come on, bro. I'm sorry, people. They, they're, they're preventing me. They're preventing me from doing what I'm trying to do, bro. They're preventing me. They're not letting me share it. They're not even giving me an option. And my whole computer is tripping. Like, my mouse is just, like, skipping all over the place. My memory is staying in the high 90s. Like, bro, I cannot do this. It's preventing me. And you see how important this message is. This already right here will cause a lot of people to just turn off the damn video because I'm, I'm being prevented. Bro, I'm tired. I'm, I'm freaking tired, man. I'm tired, bro. What in the hell, man? So y'all really not going to let me. I don't want to delete the fucking post permanently. Why are you only giving me the option to delete? That is insane. So it's not even letting me do it on my phone, people. It ain't letting me pull it up on my phone. The only way I can pop possibly do it on my phone is literally to scroll my wall all the way to hell back to May. And that would take forever. Because I post a lot of stuff. I will literally, I gotta literally scroll all the way to hell back to May to try to freaking post this again. Because Facebook doing the most. They doing the most, bro. I'm not even trying to take all of this time. I didn't know it was gonna do all of this crap, bro. I did not know. I should have known. I've been scrolling for freaking three minutes now, and I'm only three days ago. There ain't no way in hell I can scroll all the way to freaking May. Oh, Oh, my God. Why in the hell is Google updating, bro? Like, see, you, you, you see what I'm saying, man? Now Google Updater is running in my task manager. This is why my computer is being stupid. It just takes it upon itself to start updating shit that I didn't ask it to update. I didn't ask it to do this. It just takes it upon itself to start doing this shit. Sorry, people. I'm tired. I am tired. I'm tired of Satan. I'm tired of all his freaking tactics. I'm tired of evil, bro. I'm tired. I'm tired of him suppressing the truth. Bro, I, I'm just tired. Okay? And then I have no help, no compassion from people, no mercy from people, but yet I spend all my damn time, energy, and effort trying to get people to see the true reality. Trying to get people to see how we have been living in a false reality, in a deception of Satan. But they don't want to see it because they're so happy living in Pleasure Island. July 14th, bro, I even got to June. I'm still in July. Come on, man. I got to get to these posts, bro. Let me try one more time to see if this is going to work, bro. Hold on, people. Let me try one more time. Maybe Google won't be trying to install bull crap. I don't know. But I, I seriously think Facebook does this on purpose to try to prevent me from pulling up my, my old posts, bro. I think they do this on purpose. All right. I seriously think they do this on purpose to suppress 
this truth. Why else on my phone it won't give me the option to share? Like it, it like when it says next, I go to next and it only highlights the delete permanently. Like, <laughs> like bro, are you serious? <laughs> wow. What makes you think I want to delete my post? Come on, man. Oh, please come on. Didn't I just put it on May? I just put it on May. I could have sworn that I did. May. Damn. Okay. Mm. And then take an awful lot of my stuff. Hold on, people. <clears throat> Give me just a second. It's about your heart. Oh, shit. This is what I was doing during my time without internet. April 16th, okay. That's what I was doing during my time without internet. All right, let's see here. I posted several, but I don't know. I'm gonna go to this one first. Come on, man. I'm doing my best, people. Okay, that's not one of my posts. Let's see, it's not letting me see. Like, I can't tell if it's my post or not. Just by um looking at what they're showing me on the thumbnail. Like, bruh, I said posted by me, not other people. What in the hell? I posted a lot, so I'm not understanding why it's not finding my post. Because this is what I spent my time doing. I will, I will post all of these things, like all of these messages, instead of doing videos, I was blogging. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find all my blog posts. And I, like, apparently, Facebook has hidden them. Like, this is crazy. Like, they, like, they do the most, bruh. They do the most. Like, what? <laughs> They're afraid. Okay? They are afraid of these messages getting out. Because once these messages really get out, then, you know, it's going to break the deception of Lucifer. Okay? So they do the most to try to uh, suppress this truth. Right, you're getting on my nerves. It's really getting on my nerves, bro. For all the self-righteous people who continue. Let's see. I need that one as well. Give me a second. Sorry, I know it's been way more than a second. But, um, I can't help it, people. I can't help it. And, you know, I gotta, uh, deal with this slow-ass PC. So, because I have to deal with it, you guys are gonna have to deal with it, too. You know, somebody show compassion and mercy to me to help me. Okay? <laughs> mm. One second. I'm only at July 9th on my phone.
Man, you cannot be serious. That is not what I clicked on. Y'all need to quit messing with me. Let's go ahead and get this one. All right. Uh, do not refresh this. You better not. I was just on this. Please do not refresh it. Thank you. Because I need this. This is what I clicked on. Quit messing with me. Like God. Oh, Lord have mercy. You know what, bro? <laughs> Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Yahushua, the promised anointed one. Whatever name, you know, the one that I serve, the good shepherd, okay? It don't matter about the pronunciation of the name. Man, come on! All right. So, I'm going to show you these next two, and then that's going to be it, okay? Um, we're going to get this one. F what the hell? Why? That is not what I clicked on! Okay? That, that, bro, you saw the one that I was clicking on. The one in vain you worship. You know what? I'm so annoyed, bro. I'm tired. I am tired, okay? Like, I'm seriously freaking tired. I'm seriously freaking tired, bro. I'm seriously freaking tired. This! Alright? So, I guess this was a, a video, okay? Um... No, this was posted on November. No, I posted again. This here. Okay, this is what I was looking for. All right. So this was posted on April 29th. All right. Now, this was an important post. I did not have internet at this time. So I literally sat here uh, on my phone, typing this out on the phone. Okay? Flowing by way of the spirit. This is how I spent my time, energy, and effort when I did not have internet. I used data on my phone to do this, okay? FYI, I'm very much well aware I may lose many friends and even possibly subscribers for this post. I do not care. It's time for this truth to be spoken. Whether you have the ears to hear, the heart to receive, and the eyes to see or not. It doesn't change my mission in which I've been given. You want to do your best to diminish me and marginalize me, ignore me, and all of these things as if that's going to stop me from doing what I have been instructed to do. Okay? Not only do I got to put up with all the people who I'm here to help liberate, I got to put up with all of them diminishing me and marginalizing me ignoring me and all of these things but I also have to put up with the powers that be trying to stop me it's like all the forces of evil trying to come against me all the forces of evil trying to come against the few righteous upon the earth here to bring about righteousness upon the earth why do you people love to hate the true righteous ones. Why do you work with the evil powers that be to diminish us? And then at the same time when I claim that you worship and serve my power. You do not. You have made yourself an agent of Satan. When you've seen that your rejection and your ignoring and all of that didn't work, then you begin gaslighting and projecting false realities onto me. Know you not 
that great judgment is coming for those who call good evil and evil good? You want to demonize me for being obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit. You want to twist things around due to your core belief system and claim I'm using people. Claim I'm a burden on society. Claim I'm the problem. You want to say things like you trust in this system more than us who work for a living and pay your life expenses with our tax dollars. They claim I trust the system. They refuse to see that I'm trusting the great spirit. Number one, how in the hell are you disregarding the wicked who established this system but want to demonize me for exposing the truth about how it was established? Number two, How in the hell are you salty about your tax dollars being used to give bare necessities to people in need, yet have no issue with your government using your forced tax dollars for nefarious purposes, such as murder of innocent civilians? You people do not see how deeply you have been deceived. Number three, you want to claim I'm not being a responsible adult. Yet you disregard that you're doing the exact opposite of how the scripture stated we are to live and act towards one another. Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures. That is money, materialism on earth where moth and rust destroys and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Pure heart, pure conscience, fruits of the spirit, where moth and rust does not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Is your heart truly For the most high? Or is it within the things of this world? Your money, your status, your clout, your lust of your flesh, the pride of life. Your actions determine which it is. Not what you profess out your mouth, nor what you psych yourself out to believe in your heart. Peep this scripture. 1 John 2, 15 through 18. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of this wicked as world. And this world is getting ready to pass away, and all the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of the Most High abideth forever. Little children, because we're supposed to be humble like a child. Little children, it is the last time. It is the last time. And as you have heard that any Christ shall come, even now there are many any Christ, whereby we know that it is the last time. Back when the Messiah was on the earth, there were many any Christ. There's still been many any Christ. But this is the last time that he is pruning his vineyard. Because he came in a physical back then when there were many antichrist. And he was crucified and rose again, became an ascended master. And he sent the spirit. And he declared that he would awaken us in the land of our captivity. Bring back to remembrance of who we are. That is in Baruch 2.30.
Okay, so now the children of light has been awakened in the lands of our captivity. We have received the spirit. Therefore, this is the last time that he is pruning his vineyard. Why are you so in love with this wicked ass world? Why in the hell do you feel the need and urge to demonize me? Know you not that you're setting yourself as an adversary to the one that you have been professing that you love and serve? What you got to say about this? Matthew 6, 25-34 Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food? And the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are we not more valuable than they? Yeah, we are because we have conscious consciousness. All right? We have free agency to choose. All right? The birds don't have free agency to choose. They were created to worship and praise the most high. They they don't they they don't have the ability to rebel against the most high. Okay? They do what they were created to do. But humans have been given consciousness. Therefore we have free agency to choose who it is we serve. Okay? All the birds serve the great spirit. Okay? By default, the birds serve the great spirit. But we have to choose with our free agency to serve the great spirit. Or serve the adversary. It's one or the other. Okay? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? Consider how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his glory was adorned like one of these. If that is how the Most High clothed the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow thrown in the, into the furnace with the seasons coming in and out, okay, he will, will he not much more clothe you you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, quote, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? End quote. For it is the Gentiles that strive after these things. Yes, it's the Gentile nations that strive after those things. Okay? Now, that doesn't necessarily condemn the Gentiles. No, they have a purpose. All right? Because they have acquired the abundance of the riches of the world. Yes, it was gotten in much bloodshed. It is ill-gotten gain. Okay? But they still have a purpose. Okay, because they can choose out of their free agency to utilize the blessings of Lucifer for righteousness sake. Okay, yes, they have that option. All right, so th just because the Gentiles seek for the riches and the wealth of the world and all of that, like I said, it doesn't necessarily condemn them. All right, because they can turn it around. They can utilize what their forefathers stole. They can utilize it for righteousness sake. All right. By being an M for his vine. Okay. Now, and your heavenly father knows that we need these things. Okay. Our heavenly father knows that we need these things. All right. Not money, but we need to be able to sustain our life. Understand it was the wicked that established money. Okay? But before the wicked came and stole the lands and all the resources, we did not utilize money to sustain our life. 
because we had the resources of the earth, okay? But now the wicked have the resources of the earth, and they established a wicked-ass economic system, all right? But our Father still knows that we need to sustain our life. We're instructed to seek first the kingdom of the Most High and His righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto us. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Today has enough trouble of its own. See, many people are professing out their mouth that they trust, love, and serve the Most High. Yet, they're not living their life as these scriptures instruct of us. But I am. You really should ask yourself, why you detest me? Because it ain't me who you really detest. People are detesting the one that they have been professing out of their mouth that they serve. Matthew 6, 24, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both the Most High and money. Who is it that you truly serve? You need to go within and truly examine your heart. Seriously, people. How can you truly say you love and serve my power when you demonize me for not doing what you do, especially when my actions is lining up with how we were instructed to live in love for one another, having compassion in our heart, kindness, mercy, and empathy. Many people have shut up their bowels against me, proclaiming I don't even deserve to have my bare necessities because I choose not to earn money, outright disregarding the work they clearly see me doing. Just because I don't want to work for money doesn't mean I don't work. I just work for the real gold, not fool's gold. But by all means, continue hardening your heart toward a servant of the one that you claim you serve. See for yourself where that gets you. Mark 7, 7 through 9. But in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the precepts of men, neglecting the commandment of the Most High. You hold to the tradition of men. He was also saying to them, You nicely set aside the commandment of the Most High in order to keep your tradition. In this day and hour, the tradition is that everybody have to work. Earn money so that you can sustain your life. That is a tradition that we were all born into. And people have been complacent with it. You see how little support this post has? That's four people. Four people. One person cared. One person loved it. And two people liked it. Okay? Has three shares. Look at the comments. This person, um, this is my sister, Deanna uh, Tullison, all right, my Hebrew sister. She says, this was a hard post to read, but nevertheless, truth. You know, I said, uh, there's much more within my spirit, but I was on limited time, having had to get ready for an appointment. I've been well-equipped spiritually to deal with all the hate I've been receiving. It's hard to deal with all I've had to endure due to the cold hearts of the people. It causes the few of us to cry out and lean upon the Spirit. 
that's detrimental to those setting themselves as adversaries to the mission of the children of light, awakened within the land of our captivity. I'm here to help people, yet they rather do everything they can to make me a thing of naught. Great judgment is coming to these hard-hearted people. All right, so we got done with that one. Okay, here's some more. And this was posted in December, December 20th of 2023. But I do find it extremely appalling and absolutely crazy how many so-called, quote, righteous people hate the truth of the Most High. We've been living in such an upside-down, artificial, superficial-ass world for so long, most people can't even recognize good apart from evil. They have been blended. They have blended, they have blended both good and evil together and placed that on who they consider to be, quote, God, thereby having no accountability for their actions. Mainly Christians and Hebrew Israelites have corrupted have this corrupted warped thinking about Jesus' blood covering their sins. Again, taking no accountability for their own actions. Is blood sacrifice righteous? You think human sacrifice is benevolent? This is a satanic doctrine in which many people have been deceived into believing. Most of these people worship money and materialism. They hate the Most High. They hate His true people. And when I say his true people, I don't mean based on skin color. No, nah, not these days. No, nah, these days, the Father's people are known by our fruit. We're the ones who walk in divine love, yet are completely and absolutely hated by those who claim they love him. What they truly love is their money, their status, their clout of men, all that vanity. Their hearts are wholly corrupted. I don't give a damn about clout and vainglory. Yet I can't help but see how many of you truly hate me. What have I done to cause you people to hate me the way that you do? How is it that I can tag a hundred people in a post and it goes completely ignored? Not just any post, but a very important post, calling attention on a deception we've all been up under. The economic monetary system never came from the Most High. It was set up by wicked people who sought for power and Greed, I'm not your enemy. This entire time I've been here trying to help you. This entire time I've been here trying to help you. All while you people continue to ignore what I have been given to speak. I hope you know you don't have much more time to continue to reject the truth by way of the spirit. Yeah, the living word will prick your spirit. That's what it's supposed to do. But I'm floored at the amount of hate I feel from people on this platform. It's absolutely crazy how y'all profess to love the Most High, yet you hate his servant? Nevertheless, go ahead and ignore this as well as I know many of you will do. Change your heart. To be rich is not what we have in our bank account, but what we have in our hearts. I have 15 cent in my bank account. It's a checking account. I don't have a savings account. All right, now, um, let's get to this last one here. This was also posted on April 29th, 
for all the self-righteous people who continue wanting to demonize me while holding to this world's ideology. To all of you offended, you wouldn't have made it through an episode of me without having a meltdown. And that's real, people. You will not have been able to stand all the people that, you know, call themselves offended by me and and you set yourself as an adversary against me, you wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. You wouldn't have been able to make it through the first episode. You would have failed. You would have tumbled. You would have crumbled under the pressure. But I've been standing strong in the face of all of this adversity. Instead of loving the righteousness and light I've been instructed to demonstrate, you instead make yourself an enemy, projecting false realities. However, in the real reality, you self-righteous hearted people wouldn't last any amount of what I've had to endure this last two years. I ain't said out of arrogance. It said out of absolute truth. If it wasn't true, even if you wasn't spiritually grounded enough to do what I'm doing, you would at the very least support what I've been instructed to do. You would appreciate what I've been instructed to do. You wouldn't go out of your way to demonize and gaslight me for doing what I'm instructed to do. You wouldn't shut up your bowels and withhold love, compassion, kindness, mercy, and or empathy from me simply because I'm obedient to my spiritual mission and not doing what you do. You want to believe you're righteous, yet you wouldn't be able to handle this fire. That's all I'm going to get on that, people. All right, because my computer's extremely laggy, okay? It's extremely laggy. I'm so tired of global accounts running in the background, bro. I don't understand what that is. I never asked it to run, but it's whatever, bro. It's whatever. I'm just going to keep pushing on, okay? We're over an hour already, and I know that the majority of this um, was taken up with my slow-ass, laggy PC, having to fight this PC, bro, to do what I've been instructed to do, okay? Now we're going to go ahead and start this audio. Um, it's going to start off kind of illegible. You're not going to be able to really hear, but I'm basically communicating with my maker, all right. Um, I, it kind of starts with a, a melody that was upon my spirit, like that was within my heart. And uh, you'll hear it faintly at first, and then it's gonna slowly um, get a bit louder to where you, you know you can hear what I'm what I'm saying. Okay, let's go ahead and get it started. <sighs> Gotta wait for the slow PC. Through all of these 
problems You know that I trust in you For all of these issues You know that I trust you Almighty power You know that I trust in you For all of these problems You know that I trust in you through all these afflictions, you know that I trust you. Almighty power, you know that I trust in you. Through all of these problems, you know I get faith in you. Through all of afflictions, you know that I trust you. Almighty power, you know that I trust in you. Through all of these problems, you know I got faith in you. Through all these afflictions, you know that I trust you. prevent myself from being homeless. And this has caused many people to detest me. This has caused many people to look at me as if I'm self-righteous. Like, wow. That is the complete opposite um, of this. Of course I am not self-righteous. How can I be self-righteous when I'm depending upon the Spirit to sustain me? And I'm being obedient to what I've been instructed to do by way of the Spirit. No, it's the self-righteous people that want to project their false reality onto me. Because ultimately, they trust in materialism. Ultimately, they are trusting in their money. They're trusting in and of their own efforts. They're trusting in their own might. And what it is they do in order to sustain their lives. They're not trusting in the word they're professing out their mouth. Nah. The only ones of us that truly serve that power, the eternal living power, the true and living power, is those that are doing the will of the eternal living power. And our actions 
will line up to that eternal living power. The fruits of the Spirit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, mercy, goodness, chastity, charity, all of these things are our fruits that we live by. These are fruits that I literally live by. And no self-righteous person can tell me how I live my life. They can assume, presume all they want. Their projection, their perception of me doesn't matter. They can perceive whatever they want. Their perception can be whatever the hell they want it to be, but it doesn't make it the true reality. Understand that the only thing that matters is the truth. Okay. The great spirit knows how I live my life. So why I'm going to be concerned about other people's perception of me. I don't care about your perception of me. And your perception is irrelevant. Okay? All I have to do is continuously be obedient to the Great Spirit and allow the Great Spirit to remove the opposition out my way. And you people hate that. You know? Yeah, you, you you hate that I don't worship your God, okay? It's clearly written, it's engraved on your money, in God we trust. But I don't trust in that God, all right? I trust in the true and living power. This God has enough people bowing down to it, doing all kinds of heinous things in order to earn it or obtain it. Okay, people got blood on their hands for this money. I ain't got no blood on my hands for money. My heart's pure before the eyes of my maker. My conscience is clear before the eyes of my maker. So it don't matter. What you people want to believe. It don't matter what you people want to think about me. The only thing that matters is what the Most High thinks about me. But I am very well aware of how much you people literally detest me. And it's okay because the Most High said that this is how it would be. For those of us that would truly follow him. For his sheep that have the ears to hear his voice and we're obedient. Yeah, we, we were already we were already warned, you know, how we would be treated by those who love this world. See, all my life I never understood how come everyone else seemed to be loved and accepted and adored and you know anytime they fell on hard times they had all kinds of people willing to help them but anytime i needed help you know i was i i was detested nobody wanted to help me all right it and it ain't changed it's only getting much worse okay because all my life growing up when my family did help me you know i i had to deal with all their lecturing and belittling okay um, they, they would help me, but at the same time, they would belittle me and put me down and try to make me feel like I'm less than. So, you know, now people just shut up their heart of compassion altogether and project false realities onto me, you know, but I can't let that stop me. You know, even with all the problems that I have to live with and deal with, put up with on a continual basis, bruh. I got a lot of problems that I'm facing, okay? I including this slow-ass PC that barely wants to operate.
And this is day four, I think, without any kind of herb. You know? It sucks, bro. I keep it real, all right? I use the herb. I use the cannabis, you know, for, you know, uh, it's a crutch. You know, that's my happiness, okay? Yeah, I'm very authentic on this platform. I enjoy my cannabis, all right? It helps to keep me calm. It helps to ease my nerves, okay? It helps me to cope in this wicked-ass world that I'm being forced to live in. But I don't have any cannabis. I don't have any herb. But yet I'm still getting on here doing my due diligence. I'm at the bottom of the bag of my tobacco. I have no money. As I stated earlier, there's 15 cents in my checking account. There's $3 on my PayPal. That's all the money that I have to my name. Less than $5 to my name. Less than $4 most likely to my name. Okay? Most people will lose their damn mind. They will not know what the hell they're going to They will be going crazy. Most people will be going crazy. In my situation. This is why they wouldn't be in my situation. This is why they do what they can do to get their money. You know? No matter what it takes, they will work jobs they hate in order to earn that money. But I ain't doing that. I put my trust and faith in a higher power. Therefore, I trust that higher power to sustain me. It's the spirit that gives me strength to endure through the long-suffering. Because, yes, I am long-suffering, people. All right, I sacrificed my own wants, my own desires. It's been close to about a year, you know, since I've been able to buy a bottle of wine, if it's not been longer than that. All right? Yeah, I enjoy my wine from time to time, but I ain't been able to afford it. You know, I've barely been able to keep a roof over my head. You know, I didn't lost the internet like three times. All right? There is no guarantee that, you know, um, the internet's going to stay on this time. You know, um, the, the, uh, I'm back with Cox, okay, uh, and they have a third party that they had in Walmart, and these people approached me, all right? Cox representatives approached me, um, and they... We're basically like, you know, don't worry about your old bill. This is how it's going to work. Whenever you get $50, you know, contact us and we'll get your internet restored for $50, you know, and then it's going to be, you know, you have to pay up front. See, before Cox will come and install your internet for free and all of this, and you don't have to pay, you know, uh, until, you know, a month later. All right. Um, but because I guess, you know, they're, they're doing it a different way now with this third party, this third party is like pay up front, pay the $50 up front and we'll go ahead and give you your internet. Okay. But if it's not paid, um, on time, the very next day they will disconnect it. They ain't playing no games. Okay. They made it very crystal clear that I, I literally have, and it's a little less than a month. Okay. They, it's like a couple of days less than a month. And I, I think it's because, um, when they came out, it was on a Wednesday when they had came out to, um, activate it, but it wasn't activated. So I literally had to wait till that following Saturday for another tech to come out and get it working on my PC. All right. It, Cause it wasn't working. It wasn't, it wasn't connecting. All right. So, um, really, um, let's see when the heck that was. Give me just a second. Let me pull up my calendar right quick. So I can tell you exactly when uh, the internet was um, on my PC. Because that's when I posted my first video anyway. Uh, when I, whenever I posted my first video. Let's see. I think it was the 13th. Okay. I think it was the 13th of July. So, but they had came out on the 10th of July on that Wednesday, 
And uh, that's where they're going based on because my bill is due on the 8th of August, okay? So on the 8th of August, they're going to be expecting $50, okay? Um, I may be able to push it to um, Saturday or Sunday because that's when it was actually activated. So on the 10th, um, really I should get to the 10th, you know, and if it's not paid by the 10th, then they'll disconnect it on, on the 11th. But as of right now, um, they're saying that they will disconnect it on the 9th if $50 is not paid. Okay, so I'm looking at August 9th um, that the internet will be disconnected if it's not paid. Okay, um, that's one day before my birthday and I'll be 48 years old. All right, um, so people, I'm not sure what all is in store for me um, before, you know, all of this is overturned for my good, okay? Not sure what all I have to endure and for how much longer, but I do know that we're in a time period to where, you know, um, we're getting ready to be restored. The children of light are getting ready to be restored to who we were before we were invaded by the worst of the heathen, okay? And the worst of the heathen were allowed to come over here to these lands. Um, they destroyed the people who they found, okay? We were found here by the Europeans, all right? But these days, you know, when you say American, you know, you're picturing, you know, Europeans. Europeans are looked at as Americans now. All right, but they are foreigners. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not I'm not saying this to, you know, offend you, Europeans. I'm really not. But this is not your ancestral land. Okay? This was the ancestral land of the holy people. The copper colored people. All right? That was found here by the Europeans. All right, and there were many nations residing here with us. All right, but they knew that we were originally here. They just chose to dwell with us. The Hebrews always had a mixed multitude dwelling with us. Okay, but when the Europeans invaded, you know, they sought to diminish us. Okay. Yes, they diminished us, and they replaced us with counterfeits, all right? They began to, you know, separate via skin color. We're not the ones who establish race. We're not the ones who use skin color as a weapon, as discrimination, any of that. We didn't do that. These people did that, okay? So you need to understand that, all right? So understand, we're going to be restored to who we were before manifested destiny, all right? Before doctrine of discovery, okay? So we're not going to stay diminished, okay? The Great Spirit only allowed this for a certain amount of time, not for eternity, okay? Not for eternity, this was only allowed for a period of time during the times of the Gentiles, okay? And now it's our arise, okay? But we have to fight through hell, you know? We, we literally have to endure all kinds of persecution, affliction, and all of these things, okay? Let's continue. Let me take it back a little bit. Attributes. You know, I have the attributes. I have the fruits of the Spirit. One second. I know where I'm at. All of these things are our fruits that we live by. And these are attributes that we possess which line up 
to the attributes of the one we declare that we serve. It don't matter what people want to profess out their mouth. It don't matter what people want to cite themselves out to believe in their heart. Now what truly matters is a proof in a pudding. Alright? That's what truly matters. The eternal living word truly matters. Truth really matters. It is the eternal truth that matters. Not the darker freaking mortal man-made beliefs, ideologies of men in this wicked ass system. You've been deceived. And the Most High is going to allow you to trust in your strong delusion. Going to allow you to keep taking his name in vain to your own detriment. Because you're going to be held accountable for taking his name in vain. Taking his name in vain don't mean saying goddamn. It don't mean saying oh lord. And, and you know same thing as taking his name in vain. Okay? No, taking his name in vain means that you're professing that you serve and love and worship that power that you didn't spoke on, that you didn't put in your mouth. You put that power's name in your mouth. You claim to love, worship, and serve that power. But your actions are contrary to everything that that power instructed of us. Therefore, you have taken the name in vain. And you are going to be held accountable for that. Not only are you going to be held accountable for that, but you're also going to be held accountable for how you have treated the ones of us who have been obedient to the one you want to profess out your mouth. See, the ones of us that you detest, the ones of us that you scorn, the ones of us that you look your nose down upon, the ones of us that you've been mistreating this entire time, the ones of us whom you slander, the ones of us whom you shut up your bowels against. Yeah. Yeah. It's us. That he's going to benefit. Yeah. It's us that he's going to raise up. That he's already raising up to speak this word to you. In the, in the ears of rebellious people. Who he knew in his foreknowledge will reject his word. For several reasons. But you know. One of the most superficial reasons and why you're rejecting his eternal living word is... Hold on a second. All right. Hold on a second. It's going a little too fast for me. All right. One second. So, I am being obedient. Okay? I've been instructed to speak his words to you. Whether you listen or you fail to listen. Yeah, the Most High knows that you are rebellious. Okay? Jesus then told you, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. Okay? So you want to be shut up in your bowels of compassion, kindness, mercy, and empathy? You want to hold on to your abundance of your money and your materialistic things? Understand that he's going to say, depart from me. Okay? For I never knew you. Those of you that work iniquity. I know these are hard messages, people, but it's necessary. All right? These are necessary messages, okay? Then I would tell them plainly, <laughs> I never knew you. A tree and its fruits, okay? The narrow gate. Enter through the narrow gate, people. See, I'm on the narrow road, okay? 
For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. Isn't most of humanity pining after money in order to sustain their life? Do you think that that's leading to life? Or is that leading to destruction? Many enter through that wide gate leading to destruction. Okay? But small is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to life. And only few find it. I'm one of few that is not bowing down to the God that's been established over this false as reality, this world that we were born into, where money is God. Okay, I'm not bowing down to that God. I'm one of very few that is truly trusting in the great spirit. Right? You are to be aware of false prophets because they come to you in benevolent drapes, okay? They come to you in in what would seem to be in a good way, okay? It, It seems like a good thing, all right, to go to school, Get good grades. Graduate with honors. So that you can go to a prestigious college and and get a degree in your field of expertise. Okay? And then you can get a career in your field of expertise where you make a lot of money. And you can sustain your life and the life of your family. All right? Yes, that's presented as benevolent. That it is a righteous thing. All right? To do this. But all of that came from Lucifer. It didn't come from the great spirit. Okay? So, they come in sheep clothing. All right? The whole damn system, you know, it seems benevolent to be a responsible adult, all right? That you are taking care of yourself. But at the root is selfishness, okay? Caring for yourself and your immediate family. That is selfishness, okay? The quality or condition of being selfish, all right? Selfishness is being concerned excessively or exclusively for oneself or one's own advantage, pleasure, or welfare, okay? This world has made you think that you're being a responsible adult. But this is selfishness. Again, selfishness is being concerned excessively or exclusively for oneself or one's own advantage, pleasure, or welfare, regardless of others. Okay? So you do what you got to do to sustain your life and the life of your family. And you think that's righteous. Okay? It's not righteous. All right? Selfishness is the opposite of altruism or selflessness. All right? See, I'm selfless. I'm not working for selfish gain. Okay? I spend my time, energy, and effort helping people. Altruism. All right. The practice of disinterested and selfless concern for the well-being of others. All right. I'm concerned about your well-being. I'm concerned about the well-being of your soul. I'm concerned about 
everyone having what they need to sustain their life without having to bow down and worship a false god in order to do so. Okay? It is the principle and practice of concern for the well-being and or happiness of other humans and or animals above my own wants and desires. Okay? No. Hmm. So I use my free agency to do my spiritual mission, okay? That's volunteering, all right? Organ donor. Don't be no organ donor, people, all right? I don't agree with that. So it's charity, okay? But not given to these established charities. No. What you're to do is look for those who have the fruits of the Spirit, and if you have an abundance of the wealth of this world, you seek those with the fruits of the Spirit and become an am for them, okay? Your pastors are after self-interest, okay? They're, they don't have integrity, all right? They don't have true honor of the Most High, all right? They're not about equality or fairness or justice or virtue, any of that, they're all about selfishness, okay? That's your pastors in your pulpit pimping pastors. They don't care about their congregations. All they care about is your money, okay, and your admiration, okay? That's what they care about. If they truly cared about you, then they would tell you the truth, but they are not telling you the truth, okay? For if they tell you the truth, then you wouldn't be in their churches, all right? They would be like me, having crickets on their channel. Hardly no one paying any kind of mind or attention to what the Most High instructed for us to do, okay? Because that is is what it is, all right? Most people on the broad road, so they don't have any kind of interest or desire to hear the truth by way of the Spirit. They're all about selfishness. They're all about pleasure, okay? Of their carnal flesh. All right? Now. So. We were born into an illusion. All right? And we were all taught everything contrary to the great spirit. All right? So it seems benevolent that you work your jobs and you earn your money. Okay? But inwardly. They are ravening wolves, okay? Those who establish this economic system, nothing but a wolf, okay? And the underlying, um, the underlying, uh, concept of <clears throat> being a responsible adult is selfishness. Therefore, is a ravenous wolf, okay? You need to understand that, all right? You can't see it for what it truly is unless you humble yourself like a child and unlearn the wisdom of this world, okay? <clears throat> but by their fruit, you will recognize them. Now, let's see. Hmm. How is spending all your time, energy, and effort earning money to sustain your life bringing about any kind of righteousness upon the earth? When you can answer that logically and truthfully, then come at me, all right? Because the only way that it will be used for righteousness' sake is to have a generous heart with your abundance. But most people ain't doing that, okay? Most people ain't doing that. They're, they're doing it for selfish purposes, all right? And they think that they are righteous. All right? Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? No, they're not. But yet people sitting in them churches, people have readily accepted the false-ass reality that we've all been presented. 
All right. People are listening to these fake ass politicians on their tell a vision. Okay. You're following wolves in sheep clothing and you have no idea. Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit. Okay. So look at my life. All right. Though I have to suffer a lot. It, that, that's not what you're supposed to look at. You're not supposed to look at my circumstances. You're supposed to look at my actions, even in my circumstances, the circumstances that I'm in, um, should be a testimony with the actions and with the attributes that I'm exhibiting. Okay. That I'm demonstrating. All right. Because it, the wicked, if they were, if they were in my situation, their actions would be completely different than my actions. Okay. So it is the fruit that you are to look at. All right. Every good tree bears good fruit. We as people are trees. And the fruit that we bear is our actions. Okay. A bad tree bears bad fruit. What's some bad fruit? What's some bad actions? Selfishness, greed, jealousy, envy, hatred, bitterness, deceit, manipulation, all, all of these things is bad fruit. Okay. But do you see any of that on me? Am I demonstrating any of those negativity, negative emotion, negative, uh, fruits? No, I'm not. Okay. You can psych yourself out to believe that I am all you want. Project your false reality. It doesn't matter. But clearly my fruit is love. Kindness, empathy, mercy, compassion, goodness, all of these things. But you want to ignore all of that because you want to look on surface level at my circumstances. And you want to sum up in your mind, oh, you must be evil. Because if you were righteous and if the great spirit really instructed for you to do this, then you wouldn't be suffering. That could not be further from the truth. Because the Messiah told us that we would experience much tribulation in this world that we've been forced to live in. The Messiah then told us that if you are of the world, then the world will love you. But because you are not of the world, because I have called you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. How come I'm so hated? It ain't because that I, it ain't because I'm of the world. It's because I'm not of the world. All right. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. You ain't going to find me walking in hatred. You're not going to find me jealous of somebody. You're not going to find me bitter. You're not going to, you're not going to find any of those negative attributes on me. Okay. And a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. So the holy wicked, you're not going to find them walking in divine love. You're not going to find them showing compassion. You're not going to find them having mercy or empathy, kindness, goodness. You're not going to... You, you ain't going to see that upon them. All you going to see upon them is their money, their materialistic things. They are, they, they're glamorized. And, and so you are excited by, you know, their glamour. All right. The sparkling things. Okay. They're shiny things. All right. You're enamored by their circumstances, how they're able to just have whatever they want. They're living lavish. They don't want or need for anything. So they must be righteous, right? Every tree that does not bear good fruit is going to be cut down and thrown in the fire. 
So then by their fruit, you will recognize them. Okay, so you you think that just because I'm in the fire of adversity, you think I'm evil. But you don't understand the time period, the time frame that we've been living. Because this time frame that we've been living has been allotted to the wicked. Okay, and the holy people have been suffering this entire time. But the holy people is getting ready to rise. We're going to be elevated by the great spirit. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my father in heaven. Does this say anything about believing or confessing? The, the Messiah didn't say nothing about believing nor confessing. He said, only he who does the will of my Father will enter the kingdom of heaven. So it is about our actions, people. Not about what we psych ourselves out to believe. Not about what we confessing out our mouths. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? He's going to tell them plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. This lawlessness, what lawlessness? The lawlessness of the eternal law of love. You don't have no love in your heart for your neighbor. But you're loving your money. So that's lawlessness, people. You have casted off the eternal law of divine love. But you're holding on to your money. Right? Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them. Again, he ain't say nothing about believe. He didn't say nothing about confess. He said, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Because judgment is coming, people. The rain fell. The torrents raged. The winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall, because its foundation was on the rock. Divine protection, okay? And it's the spirit that sustains us in a, in a face of much affliction and adversity, okay? But everyone who hears these words of mine and casts it off as if it's nothing, does not act on them is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Therefore, you trusting in your money and all of that, materialistic things, when this judgment hits, the rain falling, the torrents raging, the wind blowing and beating against the house, it's going to fall, and great is going to be its collapse. Okay? Because you have chosen to put your faith and your trust in a false God, the authority of the living word. When the Messiah had finished saying these things, the crowd was astonished at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as the scribes. See, when you come on my channel, it's way different than what you will find on them Christian channels. Or on them Hebrew Israelite channels who follow the letter of the law with no discernment. They ain't got the spirit. But on this channel, oh, we worship in spirit and in truth. All right? I give it to some of the Hebrew Israelites that they operate in a lot of truth. Okay? But without the spirit of discernment, not everything that they're bringing out is the truth. 
okay, is mixed with a lot of freaking dogmatic belief systems, all right? Therefore, there's tears intertwined in it because there's a lot of hatred in it, okay? And hate don't come from the great spirit, okay? Unkindness doesn't come from the great spirit. Many of them are crude and unkind. Many of them lack compassion and mercy. They're lacking true love and empathy for all humanity and all creation. They may have it for their own people to an extent, but they don't have it for other nations. Many of them are hating the other nations, primarily the Europeans. They want to hate on the Europeans, but they don't want to go within to find out why the great spirit allowed the Europeans to come over here and manifest their destiny. All right. Yeah. They don't, they don't want to go within to find out why this was allowed to come upon us. All right. Thereby humbling themselves to the most high. Okay. Um, your Christian channels, you know, they're lacking the truth. And they didn't deceive themselves to believe that they have the spirit. But they are sadly mistaken. They ain't got the real spirit of truth. They got demonic spirits. Okay? And though, granted, I give, you know, um, benefit of the doubt that a lot of quote-unquote Christians, you know, have... You know, they're seeking, you know, the great spirit, you know, they, they, um, they have, they, they mean well, okay. They just been deceived. They've been misled. Okay. But that's why the great spirit has risen up his people to be a light, a beacon of light for those with the ears to hear the heart to receive and the eyes to see. Okay. Now I use both of those extremes, the Hebrew Israelites that, you know, are going based on a lot of truth. Okay. And then your Christians that claim and profess that they're in the spirit. All right. But you need both. Okay. You need the spirit and truth. Okay. Cause though some of the Christians, you know, in their innocence, you know, they're after the spirit of the most high. They're seeking the spirit of the most high. Okay. But they ain't got no truth. They need the truth. All right. To make the connection, you know, to the true and living power. All right. And the Hebrew Israelites, they need the spirit. Okay. You know, the Christians need the truth and the Hebrew Israelites need the spirit. Okay. I have that on this channel, but it's been widely ignored. You know, um, but anyway, people, let's continue. But you know, one of the most superficial reasons and why you're rejecting his eternal living word is because you do not like the package. You don't like the vessel. You don't like the outer package of the vessel that that power is using. Yeah, it don't fit your carnal mindset of who the great spirit can utilize. See, that's self-righteousness, people. That is pride. That is ego. I'm sorry that you dislike me and that you want to cast me off as nothing. I'm sorry that you want to cast me off as irrelevant. But you're doing it to your own damn detriment. Because the Messiah had made it very plain and crystal clear to you when he told you, however you treat the least of these, my brethren, is how you have treated me. And whatsoever you shall do for one of the least of these, my brethren, you do it for me. But you people don't want to come to that realization. You don't want to own up to that. No, they don't want to own up to that. All right, hold on a second. Oh, goodness sakes. Mm -hmm. 
The king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Okay? Now, this is the righteous. All right? The righteous shall answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungered and feed thee? When did, when did we help you when you were in need? All right? When did we have compassion upon you? When did we show mercy to you? All right? When did we show empathy unto you? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Barely I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, I am considered least. Okay? I'm considered a thing of not in this world. I don't have no accolades. I don't have no degrees. I ain't got no honors of men. And I ain't got no money. Okay? So in this world, I'm seen as nothing. Okay? However, I have been gifted by way of the Spirit. Alright? So only the righteous will be able to perceive it. Because they will judge based, up, based upon the fruits of the Spirit. Alright? And the king will answer them after they take their place as a righteous am. Alright? The king will say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them, On the left, okay? Hold on, let me actually... I'm going to appear a little bit because he's going to say to the uh, righteous. Hold on. Hold on. Mm, okay. All right. So, this is the gathering of the sheep and the goats, okay? Before him shall be gathered all you nations. All the nations, okay, is going to be judged according to our actions, okay? He is going to separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Okay, now he's speaking to the to the ones on the right. Okay, the king will say unto them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared from, for you. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Okay, come inherit it. That's what he's going to say to those on the right, the sheep. All right, and he's going to say, you show me compassion, kindness, love, mercy, and empathy. All right, and again, the righteous is going to ask him, when did we show you love, compassion, kindness, mercy, and empathy, Lord? All right, and the king's going to answer and say, verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. He's going to say this to both the vine and the am, okay? The righteous, okay? Now, all the ams are those who have the riches and wealth of the earth who choose out of their free agency to utilize the blessings of Lucifer for righteousness sake. Okay, and his vine are those who are physically impoverished, lacking the thing that's been established as the currency of the earth, of the world, in order for us to sustain our life. We're lacking that, but we have been given abundance of the spiritual wealth, okay? So you're, we're either a vine or an elm, because I'm lacking the physical materialistic things, but I have an abundance of the spiritual wealth. I am a vine. 
Okay? Therefore, there are ams that have an abundance of the physical wealth that's required by the wicked for us to sustain our life. You are to join with his vine if you are righteous. Okay? And it is both of us, the elm and the vine, that will be considered sheep on his right hand that is going to be able to enter into the coming kingdom. Okay? Now, then he will say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For you refuse to show compassion, kindness, love, mercy, and empathy. They're going to say, when did we refuse to show you love, compassion, mercy, and empathy? And he's going to say, verily, verily, I say unto you, inasmuch as you did not to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did not for me. Okay? So you want to cast me off as a thing of not? You do have free agency to do so. But please understand that you're setting yourself as a goat. All right? And he's going to say, depart from me, and you will go away into what will seem like everlasting punishment. But the righteous are going to have eternal life. Okay? And we're going to be happy. Okay? We're going to be blessed. All right? I'm sorry that this is a hard message, people, but it's the truth. You, many of you, want to ignore the message because you don't like the packaging. All right? You're missing the message because you're too busy trying to find fault in the messenger. All right? You, you don't want to take heed to that. Why don't you want to take heed to that? Because you want to continue in your own wisdom. Your own vain imaginations. You truly want to believe that your belief is going to save you. No, it's actually damning you. Okay? Because your belief is intertwined with your ego. And until you subdue your ego and elevate in the spirit and in truth, unlearning the wisdom of this world and relearning via the spirit of truth, you are going to perish in ignorance. For you have chosen the wisdom of this world. You chose the wisdom of this world over the eternal truth, okay? I realize we were born into this world. We were born into this false-ass reality that many want to see as the true reality. But it's not the true reality. Because all you have to do is ask yourself, why the hell, if, it, like, bro, money has been established, okay? And many people have been working their jobs, earning their money, then why is the world in such chaos? Why is there a lack of love, mercy, compassion, empathy in the hearts of the people? Why are most people cold-hearted? Why won't you ask yourself this question? If money was so righteous, if money came from the great spirit, then the world wouldn't be in a state that is in. Okay? Therefore, your belief is irrelevant. Okay? Human belief is completely irrelevant when it comes to the, existing and op the existence and operation of natural law, the eternal law, which comes from the creator. His true word lives within his creation. No dogmatic belief will ever change this truth. His eternal law requires no belief whatsoever in order for it to be in full opposition. Okay? So belief is irrelevant. Okay? Everything that you were everything that you believe was taught to you by a mortal man. Okay? Belief does not come from the great spirit. 
okay? Beyond the walls of belief, there is a whole different world, okay? I ain't got no core belief system. I let go of my beliefs. That will happen when you subdue your ego and submit to the spirit of truth. Led via the spirit of truth. All right? I don't have to believe when I know. Okay? Why would I have to believe when I know? I went from belief to knowing. Okay? Because I'm led via the spirit of truth. All right? Your beliefs don't make you a better person. Your behavior does. And the only way that your behavior will begin to make you a better person is when you humble yourself like a child to the spirit of truth and you allow the Holy Spirit to operate within your heart and in your mind. You must renew your mind, okay? Renewing your mind means to be born again, okay? It means to not be conformed to this world, right? All right? Be not conformed to this world. When you're working your jobs, and please understand, I'm not demonizing you for working your jobs. I understand that it was established by the wicked. I'm trying to get you to see that it was established by the wicked, okay? And you have been complacent. So you are complacent with working your jobs and earning your money. But the Messiah said, be not conformed to this world, okay? You are to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So even if you are conformed to this world, working your jobs, earning your money, when you have abundance, um, you will want to help his servants in need. But if you don't help his servants in need, you have not been transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, because not only are you conformed to the world by working your jobs and earning your money, but you have also attached yourself to the mentality of the wicked. Okay, to be hoarders, to be greedy, to be selfish, to be hardened in your heart, to lack compassion, kindness, love, mercy, and empathy. Okay, you have to, you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means you have to let go of the wisdom of this world, okay? All right, so that way you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. How is it an acceptable and perfect will of the Most High to be selfish? How is it an acceptable and perfect will of the Most High to lack compassion, kindness, love, mercy, and empathy toward your neighbor that also need to sustain our life? But you don't want to help us because you want to force us to do what you do. Because you're forced to sustain your life by pining after money. You want to try to force everybody to pine after money just like you. But I don't worship the God of money, okay? So you have to be renewed in your mind. You have to see it for what it truly is, okay? Right now, you're only looking at it on surface level. Money is, is, is what's needed to sustain our life. And if you're not doing what's necessary to sustain your life, then you are a burden on society. That's surface level. That's carnal minded. Okay? You don't have a spiritual mind. Therefore, you are not able to prove what you believe. Okay? Okay? You're, you, you can't prove that that is the truth, all right? You only believe that that's the truth, all right? It's your perception of what you think is truth, but it don't come from the great spirit. It comes from the wicked, all right? But I'm proving to you what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Why am I proving that? How am I proving that?
The Messiah then told us. All right. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of the Most High. Born again means to let go of the wisdom of this world. Have a renewing of your mind. See, Paul plagiarized the Most High, or he plagiarized the Messiah, okay, who is an ascended master, all right? Paul plagiarized this by saying, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's nothing but being born again, okay? Being born again, all right? Unlearning the wisdom of this world and relearning via the spirit of truth, okay? So that way you will be able to prove that acceptable and good will of the Most High, all right? Um... And, you know, this person here, Nicodemus, was thinking with a carnal mindset. When the Messiah told him, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of the Most High. Nicodemus like, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? The Messiah answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, so that water would be the Holy Spirit. All right? the Holy Spirit, except a man be born of the Holy Spirit, okay, and of the Spirit of truth, all right, so that's water and fire, okay, John came to baptize with water, okay, the Holy Spirit, and the promised anointed one came to baptize by fire, that Spirit of truth, okay, unless you go through this, people, you cannot enter into the coming kingdom, all right? That which is born of flesh, all right? We were born into this wicked-ass world in the physical, all right? We were taught everything contrary to the great spirit. That's why everybody pretty much is lacking love, compassion, mercy, and empathy within their heart. But they love their money. They love their materialistic things. That is born of flesh, okay? You're taught that from birth. Okay? But that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. I was born of the Spirit. Okay? Therefore, I'm able to prove what that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High is. Okay? I can prove that. All right? Therefore, I have the keys to the kingdom. All right? Peep my video uh, that I dropped yesterday. The kingdom of the Most High. All right, I'm giving these oracles freely. All right, all while being spat upon. Okay, real ones are are most hated by the pretenders. All right, it's the charlatans that really hate me. All right, the Pharisees, you know, the religious leaders, they're ego led. All right closed-minded, disengaged, don't have a compassionate bone in their body, legalistic, they, they go based upon a letter of the law, all right, with no discernment, they are judgmental, surface level, all right, negativity, negative emotions, all right, exclusivity, all right, like the Hebrew Israelites, they want to exclude other nations, you know, um, they want to say that all other nations are going to perish, you know, simply because they're a different nation, a different nationality, a different skin color. It ain't based on that. It's based upon our heart and our mindset. It's based upon our actions, okay? The self-righteous, Pharisees, all right? Traditions of men pointing fingers outwardly refusing to go within, refusing to let go of their heart of stone, okay? They got all these belief systems, all right? And they're never responsible for their own actions. Christians want to believe on a blood sacrifice, you know? They don't want to take accountability for their own transgressions. They didn't live the whole life of wickedness, but they don't think that they have to turn around and do righteousness when being coming face to face 
with their wickedness, with their transgressions. They, they want to believe that all they have to do is confess out their mouth that they believe in Jesus, believe that he came to be a blood sacrifice for their sins, and, and now his blood covering their sin. They don't think that they have to do any kind of toning whatsoever. They don't think that they literally have to walk in righteousness. No, they are depending upon a blood sacrifice. So that's not being responsible for your actions. You're pinning your responsibility on Jesus. But it ain't on him. You've been deceived. Because he did not die to cover your sin. Okay? He demonstrated the eternal divine law of love, people. All right? And his people, his sheep, are to follow suit. Okay? Now, I'm being obedient, giving you his word by the way of the spirit. All right? But you have free agency to continue being rebellious. Let's continue. Go back just a bit. In ignorance, for you have chosen the unlearning the wisdom of this world and relearning via the spirit of truth. No, it's actually damning you. Okay? Because your belief is intertwined with your ego. And until you subdue your ego, and elevate in the spirit and in truth, unlearning the wisdom of this world and relearning via the spirit of truth, you are going to perish in ignorance. For you have chosen the wisdom of this world. For you have chosen the wisdom of this world, which is foolishness with the most high. Okay. So, profess out your mouth all you want that you serve and love my power while you continually spend all your time, energy, and effort pining after the true power that you serve. All right? Because it ain't the true and living power, but the, the power that you serve, the true power that you serve, is the power of money and materialism. Okay? Your actions line up to that. Okay? You go out of your way to do everything you can to acquire that God. And you cast off the true wealth of the one you profess out your mouth that you love, serve, and worship. You're about to be shown to be a liar. You're about to be shown to be a charlatan. For you cannot serve, you cannot love, you cannot claim that you love, serve, nor worship the one you're professing when you get no love for your brethren. And that's scripture, all right? You can profess out your mouth all you want that you love and serve the Most High. But he didn't told you. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love the Most High, whom he has not seen? You see me, but yet you hate me. So how in the hell are you professing that you serve, love, and adore my maker? No, 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 no. All right? Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in a day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him, because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. 
For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how in the heck can he love the Most High whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loveth the Most High love his brother also. Okay? You are to love your neighbor as you do yourself. You are to love the Most High with your whole heart, mind, and soul. And then love your neighbor as you do yourself. On those two commandments is all the law and the prophets, people. If a man has an apartment stacked to the ceiling with newspapers, you will call him crazy. If a woman has a trailer house full of cats, you will call her nuts. But when people pathologically hoard so much money that they impoverish the entire nation, you put them on the cover of Fortune magazine and pretend that they are role models. People, if you can't see the strong delusion now, after we have been instructed to speak and make it crystal clear to you, there's no hope for you. Okay? You are going to perish. All right? Yes, you're going to perish. When you shut up your bowels of love, compassion, mercy, and empathy, when you're hard and in your you cannot love, you cannot claim that you love, serve, nor worship the one you're professing when you get no love for your brethren. When you shut up your bowels of love, compassion, mercy, and empathy. When you're hard and in your heart. And you got the model, you got the philosophy, root hog or die poor. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Money don't grow on trees. If you don't learn to earn and save your own money, quit asking for a handout from me. Money don't grow on trees. So you are hardened in your heart. You are lacking compassion. You are lacking mercy. You are lacking love. You are lacking empathy. But you got plenty of money that you're saving in your savings account. That's why the wisdom of Solomon declares, wisdom of Solomon chapter 5, it declares, What good have our riches with our saving brought us? It's going to bring you to utter shame. You literally working all of them hours so that you can stack money in a savings account that don't feel any kind of pain, don't feel any kind of misery, does not suffer. But you withhold from those who are in misery. You withhold from those who are suffering. You refuse to alleviate our suffering because you are selfish. You are puffed up in your pride and your arrogance and your heart and in your heart. Therefore, you do not serve the true and living power. You serve the adversary who has deceived you with a false god of money. Now, that's the end of that audio. We're going to finish this up right here. All right? You're going to ask yourself, what has your pride profited you? Or what good has your riches with your saving brought you? All those things are going to pass away like a shadow and as a post that hastes by. Okay? Let's go to 1 John 3, uh, 16. Let's start. By this we know what love is. The Messiah demonstrated it with his life. He did not lay down his life to cover our sins. No, he showed us what divine love is by demonstrating it with his life. And we ought to follow suit. Okay? If anyone with earthly possessions sees his brother in need, but withholds his compassion from him, how can the love of the Most High abide in him? Little children, because we're supposed to be humble like a child. Little children, let us not love in word, in speech, 
but in action, in deed, and in truth, okay? Not superficially, all right? Not vain lip service, okay? If there is someone that is poor among you, all right? And, and the Most High allowed you to have abundance of the of the resources of the earth, you know, then you are not to harden your heart or shut up your bowels of compassion. You're not to shut up your hand from those in need, okay? Whoever oppresses the poor, and you oppress us by withholding resources, that you have in abundance, okay? The resources that the wicked established, okay? So if you choose to oppress us by being selfish, withholding, then you are taunting your maker. But whoever is kind to those of us in need, you will be honoring your maker. So the righteous ams that will eventually take their place, they will be honoring the Most High. Okay? There is a purpose for the righteous Gentiles. Alright? But they have to choose out of their free agency to be obedient. Whoever shuts his ears to the cry of the poor, he too shall cry out. And receive no answer. You will have no hope when this judgment hits. At least we have hope that all of this is going to be overturned. Okay? Faith and works, people. What good is it, my brothers, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is lacking substance. If one of you tells him to go in peace, stay warm and well fed, vain lip service, but does not provide for his physical needs, what good is that? You psyching yourself out, people. You psyching yourself out. So to faith by itself, if it does not result in action, is dead. So your vain lip service is dead. Okay? If someone says you have faith and I have deeds, show me your faith without deeds. And I will show you my faith with my deeds. Alright? You believe that the Most High is one? Good for you. Even the demons believe that and shudder. All right? You want to show love, compassion, mercy, and empathy. Okay? Dang, there was something else. Hold on. It was, I, oh, let me go to, uh, history, because I still need that, yeah, I still need that, all right, one second, James 2, uh, alright, as a matter of fact, oh, is it 15? Where is the... Why are y'all hiding it now, man? There we go. Hey, bro. Come on now. You know what I'm wanting. Stop messing with me, bro. Y'all irritating me now. Come on, I'm trying to finish this. Alright. Alright, this is what I need. Okay, because I... Seen, hold on. Mm. 
Whoever has two tunics should share with him who has none. Whoever has food should do the same. Okay, when you have an abundance of something, you are to look out for those who are lacking. All right, do not be deceived, my brothers and sisters. All right, be you doers of the word. Okay, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, with whom there is no change or shifting shadow. Okay. And that's pretty much it. I could have sworn I had seen something else, but, you know, it's whatever here. Hold on. Okay, this is what I was looking for. Okay. So, yeah, we already went over this, okay? Um, the Messiah telling you, whatever you do for the least of, me, of these, my brethren, you have done it f uh, unto me, okay? All right. So you see this, all right? Whoever has two tunics or whoever has abundance, all right? You are to share with those who do not have, okay? All right? If anyone with earthly possessions sees his brother in need but withholds compassion from him, how can the love of the Most High abide in him, all right? Hearken, my beloved brethren, has not the Most High chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith? We're the heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised unto those of us who love him. Okay? So you want to be compassionate to us. You don't want to be evil to us. Okay? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked that you cover him? You, you are to help people. You are to help those in need. Not oppress us. Not look your nose down upon us because you have abundance. You know, and want to be mad at us that we don't do what you do to obtain your abundance. All right, because I don't serve the God that has been established of this world. If you think that you are wise by this world's standards, you need to become a fool to be truly wise. I'm considered a fool in this world. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness to the Most High. Okay, but those of this world consider me a, to be a fool, all right? They consider me to be ignorant, and that's well and fine because I don't care about the opinions of mortal men, okay? So however long I got to suffer, that's how long I will suffer. When you begin to speak the living word by the way of the Holy Spirit, the natural response from most people will be led of their ego. This is a defense mechanism. That's your pride. That's your arrogance, which rises up against those causing you to come face to face with your wickedness. You don't want to hear from your conscience. Therefore, the living word does not please you. Instead, it pisses you off at the speaker of the living word. And because of this, you begin to feel some type of way, hiding on those of us with the audacity to speak the uncomfortable truths. But we're at the end, people. So, you know, I'm instructed to speak his word to you. Whether you listen or you fail to listen, the Most High knows that you are rebellious. And I know that you are rebellious because I've been having to long suffer. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, when you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you are refusing to help me. Okay? Thou shalt not take the name of the Most High thy power in vain, for the Most High will not hold you guiltless, those of you who are professing his name, but refusing to be obedient. 
you are taking his name in vain. So, yeah, I wait upon the Most High, okay? I continue to wait upon the Most High, for I know that I will be delivered from the snare of the wicked. Shalom.